I'll just show what it sounds like when we're playing um, some of the some of the calls for the rails because it's possible that some of them might still be here or moving through. So um, the Sora is a small, it's a, a chicken-like bird that um, is found in wetlands. They're not chickens, they're chicken-like, but <laughs> rails are most closely, the other group of birds that they're more closely related to are um, cranes and, and limpkins. So they're, they, yeah, some of them may look kind of duck-like or something like that, but they're they're not related to ducks or other wading birds like herons or um, shorebirds. But um, the Sora has a nice uh, descending whinny call that's very distinctive. So I'll play that. We put the speaker on the ground because that's that's kind of the level that they're at. They're walking oh. along the, the ground. Let's play it again. Uh, similar in size and shape to a Sora, but with a much longer bill, has a distinctive grunt call that we play and that's the the call that's more likely to use in a response because it's more of like a territorial call <laughs> And then the, the male also does a, a tick kiddick call, uh, and that's used more as like a, the male to advertise itself and look for, for females. We don't hear that as much in response to the playback because they'll just be out there already doing that call, but they're, the male's not going to respond to another male making that call. They will respond to the grunt call, both the males and the females. I'm on busy. with the Natural History Survey and then the Hayen Consultants as our engineering contractor. Um, they wanted to make this as less stressful on the aquatic life, so that's why we did as much open air, and uh, they technically call this a BMP, a best management practice. This year, so they're not yet one, they're not yet over a year old, so th those, those would be fish that were born this year, uh, probably back in April. So yeah, they're they're three four months old. And they're using Chris Anker's Dropbox, so I'll have to tell them it's uh, working good. Trick to open and close. So in order to both allow for controlled water flow along with fish passage, they actually had two water control structures put in. So your high water level is going to be the overflow grade at the top. Then what you're gonna have is a series of stop logs in your typical stop log style water control structure where you can pull out various size stop logs to have more of a controlled drawdown. So there's three there's three stop logs that are not here right now. Two of them are at my office, one of them is with the general contractor. They're gonna vary in height from about four to eight inches. And then the bottom one looks like it's about 12 inches or 14 inches. You can put them in in any height order in order to set a low water level. So with the with the key, I mean, of course, they're really locked in. And, Normally, this one's not going to bunt, but you would basically just pull these up. Okay. So with the smaller ones, we're going to be able to set them and pull them a little more easily. There's also a flap gate on this side that with a bar you can basically open and that's going to basically set the water level at the bottom of the pipe. Um, that's going to allow for more fish passage because it's going to be an 18 inch open hole at the low water level. Yeah, yeah. So in order to draw it down more expediently, uh, you can have all these open, you can leave them open or, or various different heights. So this one is here at the north end of the square marsh. Is that what we decided to call this? What is it? North Powderhorn, 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 Powderhorn North. Powderhorn yeah. North? Yeah. There's gonna be yeah, another one at the really south end also on the Forest Reserve property. So we're gonna have two of these in order to manage this Powderhorn Marsh 
along with drawing down the uh, the, the, the dune and swale in the Powderhorn, the North Lake uh, portion. Yeah. Pool up. Um, you know, Phragmites doesn't like deep water. It likes it a little bit drier on the on the kind of the margins of the wetlands, mm -hmm. and so we can effectively. Uh, drown out a lot of that Phragmites if we're timing it properly. Uh, we can cut low and then close the water control structure so that water pools and effectively smother it. And, and we can do the same thing with cattails, but right now we want to kind of get it in place, let things kind of settle in, and then we'll kind of come in with the cavalry to, to really uh, hammer the invasive species and start promoting the, the native species. But honestly, I think a lot of us coming here, spending a summer here for the first time, we're pretty pleasantly surprised with the, with the native uh, marsh vegetation that's already here. So.